right guys welcome back to the channel yes like promise another week and it's questions and answer time so yes uh we've watched the last video um we saw the comments from the last video sorry my bad and obviously people had the questions in there so that was a good idea so we said look questions for next week put it down on the comments on this video and we're going to answer that next week so yeah man just get your questions in in the comments on these videos and yeah we're gonna do it do this every week we're gonna answer any questions that you have and yeah we're gonna do this we're gonna keep this going we're gonna keep this rolling yeah so today we got the questions from last week and we're gonna get it rolling right now so we've got mel here with me she's got your questions up and uh yeah and we also have new questions as well from yes we also have new questions as well from instagram so yeah okay so let's do it so so the first question is from Samson one two three two one on YouTube. Okay. That's a very good question. Mm -hmm. What is your mindset like in not only going to the Olympia but also realizing it is your first Olympia? Are you nervous? Are you confident? Shocking or something else? Um I'm excited. I'm excited man because you know Olympia has always been my dream man. It's always been that show that everybody will dreams to you know, to make it, you know, this is, is always this grand stage is the final bus stop is right there at the top of the hill. So, you know, right from when I started bodybuilding and wanted to take it seriously, Olympia was always the goal. So now that we finally reached a point where I feel I've achieved that and about to go step on the biggest stage in the world. I mean, I think, yeah, just like everybody else, you get a little bit of nerve kick in, you know, you get the whole, you know, butterflies and everything kick in as well. But I'm more excited than anything, man, because this is the full, this is what you've worked for so many, for so many years, and now it's happening. So, yeah, I'm more excited than anything. Okay, so follow up on that question. Mm -hmm. Do you think your mindset or confidence will be affected standing on the Olympia stage, especially being the first time with the best of the best bodybuilders in the world? Um, personally, I don't know. I think if I sat down and thought about it, it probably would affect me more, but... Something I do when it comes to doing big shows, I just try, tend to try to look at it less like any other show. You know, do exactly what you do. Look at it like any other stage. You know, when we did Arnold earlier this year, you know, I, that was definitely, um, it felt big, it felt intimidating, it felt very, you know, this is it. But, you know, trying to kind of look at it in that way tends to make you a bit more nervous. But if you kind of just say, look, it's just another stage, it's just another show, bring in your best, go on stage and do what you do. So I think that meant to, that that thought sent to sent to me a lot. So yeah, so I just think yeah, that's the same thing I'm hoping will happen at this one as well. I just let that instinct kick in. Mm -hmm. So what do you look forward to to taking away learning from the Olympia? This is still a question from Samson. Okay, okay. Um, uh, I don't know the experience because you know, like I said, it's the first Olympia. So for me, it's my first time in Vegas. First time at the Olympia, first time in something this big. So, you know, I think I don't, as much as it is, you know, it's a competition and you focus a lot on the competition. I want to make sure that my nerve, my senses are wide open and I take in the experience of it. So I can actually say, yeah, you know, a lot of people, you focus so much on the competition and coming at your best, you don't actually enjoy the process. And this one, I do want to make sure that I do enjoy the process of it, you know. Okay. What are your expectations of yourself in regard to the Olympia? Lots of fans, followers have cast their judgment of where you will place, what you will look like, your weight, whether you will take the trophy from Rami. What scenario do you see happening if you can imagine one? Uh, me, man, look, this is my, my, my vision, you know, same thing that happened when we were going to the Arnold earlier this year. I want to make sure that I bring a physique that will make people stop and take a second look. You know, people do a double take. I want to bring a physique that shock people and go, wow, we haven't seen a physique like that in a long time. Not something, not just massive, but aesthetically pleasing as well. So a physique that really makes you feel like, wow, you know, this is different. This is something I haven't seen in a long time. And for me, that is my goal to what I want to bring to the Olympia. In terms of placing, you know what, this is the thing. I don't, no athlete gets a say in where they place in the show. You know, and if you try to focus too much on, oh, I want to place here, I want to place there, it's it's sort of like, okay, you're just hoping, you know, based off someone else's opinion, based off the judge's opinion. So you can't really get a say in that. All you can do is just bring your best and then hope you get placed, you know, where you deserve. 
Me personally, obviously, I'm hoping that I make top 10. Like I've always said, you know, the goal has always been, man, if I can make top 10 in my first Olympia, I'm leaving that weekend a very happy man. So for me, that is my main focus. Okay. So we've got a question from a marvelous physique. Mm -hmm. If you make top five at the Olympia, mm -hmm. will you still compete throughout 2023? Or will you focus solely on trying to win the Olympia in 2023? Um, <laughs> you see, I, there's something I've thought about, I've been thinking about, you know, for years and time coming up going, look, when you be able to crack that top echelon, would you do what most of them do and just kind of like have the year off and just do the Olympia every year? And for me, no, man, I love competing. I love bodybuilding. And I don't want my career, you know, once you get in that top end, my career will be a thing where I only, I'm only on stage once a year. So, no, if I do make the top 10, like even regardless of what happens, man, I want to do the Arnold Classic next year. Regardless of what happens, I would like to do more shows next year. Hopefully, you know, if there's post-Olympia shows next year, I want to do all of them as well. And what we realize with me is the more I compete, the better I get. So... It's, it doesn't detract from me at all. Like you guys see in the last two years, I compare what, almost over seven shows back to back to back and I still manage to make improvements. So for me, it's like the more shows, the better. Okay. So we've got a question from Rashid Laval. Ooh. Do you really feel or see a difference when eating different carb sources? For example, do sweet potatoes work better for you than rice? No, do I feel different? Yes. I just would like to add that um, mm. Rashid is saying that he's a Nigerian decent too, mm. and he feels um, you not you people from Nigeria are uh, not the best in handling some carbs. Uh, I would disagree with that actually because I can handle every form of carbs. I've always been able to handle every form of carbs. In terms of do I feel different in different carbs? Yeah, you know, sweet potato it tends to go through me a lot quicker. So. We know when to place that and when to use that in a diet. Rice tends to hold on to my fullness. So we know where to place that, when to use that pasta. Another sauce that, you know, I grow, I grow with that. So that has its place as well. So yeah, with different carb sources, different things happen to me, but I can tolerate all of them. Okay. So I'm going to move on to questions mm -hmm. on Instagram. Uh -huh. um, so bear with me. Don't know if you want to chat about something. Well, how this week has been? How many weeks? Has? All right. So, yeah. So, while well, I was doing that, I'm going to tell you. So, currently, we are just at the end of our ninth week. So, officially more eight weeks out at this point. Uh, this week was um, was a hard one, man, because this week, we not only increased the amount of cardio we're doing, we dropped the food a lot more, and we also started fat burners this week. And for me, you know, I'm very highly sensitive to these things and when we did that it it really knocked me hard this week man honestly i don't like fat burners man it's it's the shakes the headaches the aches the pain you know cramps that always happens to me the first week of fat burners you know heart palpitations all that so i'm not a big fan of it even at a very extremely low dosage they still hit me hard like today i've been pretty much laying down all day because after this morning it just it's set, it's sapped every energy out of me. It makes me feel more. Like, it just makes me feel completely fatigued. So this week we implemented that. We got a lot sharper for it, which is always the upside. You know that's what the goal is. We got a lot harder for it, so that's always a benefit. But in terms of like feeling physically, I don't enjoy it. Mentally this week, you know, it's been it's been smooth sailing. You know, it hasn't been so much so much lows. But, you know, we managed to go through it. It's been quite all right this week. It's kind of been steady paced. There's been a few days where I felt really shitty and I'm really like, you know, low in person, just low in temperament. You know, I think one or two days this week I probably felt like that. But at the end, Friday today, I feel a lot better. Yeah. I'm looking forward to next week. Okay. So, who selects songs for your posts, stories, I'm assuming, on your social media? Oh, who selects songs for my social media stories? I do. I do. You know, I love music, man. You know, something about me. Music is the soundtrack of life, and I'm constantly listening to music, whether I'm at home, in the car, in the gym. I constantly have background music playing. You know, I love music. You know, so when I'm doing my posts, you know, any music that I'm listening to at the time, that I'm feeling at the time, or I'm using, I'm listening to when I'm training at the time, I always use for my posts as well, you know. 
but I love music all the time. I, I just can't get on with it, so absolutely. That's my thing. Okay. Do you use visualization to help you get through your prep, both physic and future situations wise? Oh, like, do I visualize about the situations of what I'm going to do or what I'm currently doing in prep? Uh, yes, I do a lot, like literally every day. You know, I don't just, you know, the thing is when you're in prep and you, you're suffering and you're putting your body through hell, you have to have something that gives you focus. You have to have a mental side that takes you to that place where you realize you can visualize why you're doing and what the goal is, you know, that throughout your whole prep, you gotta have that visualization, okay, what you're gonna be when you get on that stage, where you're gonna be backstage, how you're gonna handle each week when you get leaner. When you're training, the same thing comes in, into play, you know, visualizing how, what you want to achieve from each training session, what you wanna feel with each muscle training, you know. So yes, you know, visualization, man, it works a lot, and I always use that. Okay. Is there a hobby of yours that you gave up to focus on bodybuilding? <laughs> yeah, man, I gave up playing rugby, man. You know, rugby was always my thing before I started bodybuilding. And when I, once I first started that, it was, um, I was doing both at the beginning of it. I think it was back in 2014. And, you know, and it was kind of brought up to my attention that, you know, you can't do both. You can't train all week, play rugby in the weekend and try to do bodybuilding shows at the same time. So I had to pick one. I was already getting too old to be professional in rugby, so but bodybuilding it was a timeless, timeless thing. So, yeah, and I love bodybuilding more anyway, so, yeah. Top three video games you play? Ooh, top three video games. You know what? This is one thing about prep, you know. I know some people don't get it, but the best distraction when you're in prep, video games. And I gotta say, my top three, uh, God of War. There's a new one coming out soon i think probably next week or next month soon enough the new god of war game i'm looking forward to that like crazy absolutely awesome uh finished just finished playing along with halo infinite absolutely love that game another one of my favorite halo games man. i love that uh started today uh i played i literally downloaded and started playing uh fonza today fonza horizon you know i love cars man so having a game that you know, gets you drive all the posh, nice cars around the world. Yeah, sounds like my kind of thing. So yeah, those are my three games right now. Favorite exercise and least favorite exercise. Ooh, favorite exercise. Um, say favorite exercise. It has to be a back one. I think probably something like a rack pull is probably one of my favorite one. Uh, least favorite exercise, squats. Yes, squats. I don't like squat. I hate squats. Barbell squats, especially. I hate it. Do it anyway, but I hate it. Someone say, why are you so handsome? <laughs> and it's not me, it's not my uh, question. Really? And it's a man. You won't. <laughs> well, uh, I guess I said thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. Okay, so we are at the point, I guess, um, when mm -hmm. we ask you to ask yourself a question. Oh, really? Yes. What well, questions so I ask? So we'll wrap it up with. Okay, what well, questions I ask me to ask myself a question? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, something to do with this week. Uh, am I tired of prep already? <laughs> Am I already tired of prep? Yes, I am already tired of prep. I can answer this for you. Yeah? Answer. You're either very tired or you capitalizing on the fact that you're prepping. How am I capitalizing? Lying around. Oh, <laughs> don't tell me to capitalize. Dude, I'm suffering. You gotta let me lie around when I'm suffering. That's the, that's the only benefit of suffering in prep. And I can't say nothing <laughs> because you are prepping. <laughs> I'm prepping. So I have to be very, very careful and sensitive. I'm prepping. Watching you lying around. You gotta, you gotta take me very sensitively oh, because yeah. I'm prepping. <laughs> I think the dog is trying to speak uh, to you. All right, guys. So that's it for this week, uh, guys. Man, really appreciate you guys supporting the channel and watching our videos. Really appreciate it. We're gonna keep bringing you more. Like I said in the beginning of this, uh, drop your questions below, and we're gonna answer that next week. Yes. 
And yeah, guys, man, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time. Cool.